Good morning. It is April 23rd, and we'll be starting this morning in a new book, the book of Judges, chapter 1 at verse 1. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you desire to speak to us through it. We pray that as we begin to read this morning, that you would just meet us where we're at, speak to our hearts, Lord, that you would fill us with your spirit. Bless the day ahead, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Judges chapter 1. Now, after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall be first to go up for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Indeed, I have delivered the land into his hand. So Judah said to Simeon, his brother, Come up with me to my allotted territory, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I will likewise go with you to your allotted territory. And Simeon went with him. Then Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hands, and they killed 10,000 men at Bezek. And they found Adonai Bezek in Bezek and fought against him, and they defeated the Canaanites and the Perizzites. Then Adonai Bezek fled, and they pursued him and caught him and cut him off, cut off his thumbs and big toes. And Adonai Bezek said, Seventy kings with, thumb, with their thumbs and big toes cut off used to gather scraps under my table. As I have done, so God has repaid me. Then they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. Now the children of Judah fought against Jerusalem and took it. They struck it with the edge of the sword and set the city on fire. And afterward, the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites who dwelt in the mountains in the south and in the lowlands. Then Judah went against the Canaanites who dwelt in Hebron. Now the name of Hebron was formerly Kirjath Arba, and they killed Shishai, Achimai and Talmai. From there they went against the inhabitants of Debir. The name of Debir was formerly Kirjath Sephir. Then Caleb said, Whoever attacks Kirjath Sephir and takes it, to him I will give my daughter Aksa as wife. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it. So he gave him his brother Aksa as wife. Now it happened when she came to him that she urged him to ask her father for a field. And she dismounted from her donkey, and Caleb said to her, What do you wish? So she said to him, Give me a blessing, since you have given me land in the south. Give me also springs of water. And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. Now the children of the Kenite, Moses' father-in-law, went up from the city of Palms with the children of Judah in the wilderness of Judah, which lies in the south near Arad. And they went and dwelt among the people. And Judah went with his brother Simeon, and they attacked the Kenites who inhabited Ziphath and utterly destroyed it. So the name of the city was called Hormah. Also Judah took Gaza with its territory, Ashkelon with its territory, and Ekron with its territory. So the Lord was with Judah, and they drove out the mountaineers, but they could not drive out the inhabitants of the lowland because they had chariots of iron. And they gave Hebron to Caleb, as Moses had said. Then they expelled from there the three sons of Anak, but the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites who inhabited Jerusalem. So the Jebusites dwell with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem to this day. And the house of Joseph also went up against Bethel, and the Lord was with them. So the house of Joseph sent men to spy out Bethel. The name of the city was formerly Luz. And when the spies saw a man coming out of the city, they said to him, Please show us the entrance to the city, and we will show you mercy. So he showed them the entrance to the city, and they struck the city with the edge of the sword, but they let the man and all the family go. And the man went to the land of the Hittites, built a city, and called its name Luz, which is the name which is its name to this day. However, Manasseh did not drive out the inhabitants of Beth Sheen and its villages or to Anak in its villages, or the inhabitants of Dor in its villages, or the inhabitants of Ibleim in its villages, or the inhabitants of Megiddo in its villages. For the Canaanites were determined to dwell in the land, and it came to pass when Israel was strong that they put the Canaanites under tribute, but did not completely drive them out. Nor did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites who dwelt in Gezer, so the Canaanites dwelt in Gezer among them. Nor did Zebulon drive out the inhabitants of Kitron or the inhabitants of Nahalol, 
So the Canaanites dwelt among them and were put under tribute. Nor did Asher drive out the inhabitants of Akko or the inhabitants of Sidon or of Ahlab, Akzib, Helba, Afik, or Rehob. So the Ashtarites dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land, for they did not drive them out. Nor did Naphtali drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh or in the inhabitants of Beth Anath, but they dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and Beth Anath were put under tribute to them. And the Amorites forced the children of Dan into the mountains, where they would not allow them to come down to the valley. And the Amorites were determined to dwell in Mount Heres, in Ajalon, and in Sha'albim. Yet when the strength of the house of Joseph came, became greater, they were put under tribute. Now the boundary of the Amorites was from the ascent of Akrabim, from Selah, and upward. Chapter 2. Then the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, I led you up from Egypt and brought you to the land of which I swore to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall tear down their altars, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Therefore, also, I also said, I will not drive them out before you. But they shall be thorns in your side, and their God shall be a snare to you. So it was when the angel of the Lord spoke these words to all the children of Israel that the people lifted up their voices and wept. Then they called the name of that place Bochim, and they sacrificed there to the Lord. And when Joshua had dismissed the people, the children of Israel went each to his own inheritance to possess the land. So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord, which he had done for Israel. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died when he was 110 years old, and they buried him within the border of his inheritance at Timnah, Harry's, in the mountains of Ephraim, on the north side of Mount Gersh, Gaash. Luke 21, verse 29. <clears throat> Then he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they are already budding, you see and know for yourselves that summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happen, know that the kingdom of God is near. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. For I will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. And in the daytime he was teaching in the temple, but at night he went out and stayed on the mountain called Olivet. Then early in the morning, all the people came to him in the temple to hear him. Chapter 22. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew near, which is called Passover, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered Judas, surnamed Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. So he went his way and conferred with the chief priests and captains how they might betray him to them, and they were glad and agreed to give him his money. So he promised and sought opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat. So they said to him, where do you want us to prepare? And he said to them, behold, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water, follow him into the house, which he enters. Then you shall say to the master of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room that I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished upper room. There make ready. So they went and found it as he had said to them, and they prepared the Passover. Psalm chapter 90, verse 1. A prayer of Moses, the man of God. 
Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You carry them away like a flood. They are like a sleep. In the morning they are like the grass which grows up. In the morning it flourishes and grows up. In the evening it is cut down and withers. For we have been consumed by your anger, and by your wrath we are terrified. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years like a sigh. The days of our lives are seventy years, and if by reason of strength they are eighty years, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long, and have compassion on your servants. O satisfy us with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us, the years in which we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants, and your glory to your children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work for our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. He who, chapter 9, 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler, and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays wake at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent shall trample you. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Proverbs 13, verse 24. He who spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. The righteous eats to the satisfying of his soul, but the stomach of the wicked shall be in want. And that concludes our reading for today. God bless you. As we read this morning, Lord, I pray that the Lord would teach us to number our days and that we may gain a heart of wisdom. God bless you guys.